These splicing videos are intended to show the techniques involved in splicing Samson high-performance ropes. Some repetitive sequences have been edited for time. Watch the video to become familiar with the individual steps of the splice. When performing the splice, follow Samson's written instructions for the step-by-step -step procedure. Written instructions at samsonrope.com. This splice procedure has been developed and tested for use with Samson Class 1 products only. Class 1 ropes are produced with traditional fibers, polyester, olefin, or nylon fiber. The eye splice is used to form a permanent eye or loop in the end of the rope for attachment to a fixed point like a cleat or mooring bollard. An eye is also used to form the rope around a thimble to protect the rope when attaching to a shackle, chain, or wire rope. Instructions for this splice can be downloaded as an Acrobat PDF file from SamsonRope.com and are also available in print form in the Samson Splicing Manual. We'll be using a tubular fid for this splice and for measuring the marks. A fid length is equal to the diameter of the rope multiplied by 21. Begin the splice by taping the end of the rope with a single layer of tape. Measure one fid length from the end of the rope and make point R for reference. From point R, form the desired size of loop and make mark X adjacent to point R. Point X is where the core will be extracted from the cover. If you're using a thimble, form the loop around the thimble to determine mark X. Now measure five fid lengths from mark X and insert a pin or awl or tie a slip knot. This will keep the cover and core from moving from this point during the splicing procedure. It also helps to secure the rope beyond the pin or slip knot to a cleat or fixed point. The cover is now marked for tapering. Covers can be made of one, two, or three ends per strand. This cover has two ends per strand. Half the strands revolve to the right and half the strands revolve to the left. Starting at point R and working towards the tape end of the cover, count eight consecutive strands. Mark the cover at this point. This is mark T for taper. The mark should go completely around the cover. Starting at mark T and working towards the taped end of the cover, count and mark every fifth set of right and left strands. Bend the rope sharply at mark X. Using a pusher, awl, marlin spike, or any pointed tool, spread the cover strands to expose the core. Be careful not to pull the cover strands away from the rope when spreading the cover. It will distort the rope unnecessarily. First pry, then pull the core completely out of the cover from mark X to the end of the core. Hold the end of the core as it comes out of the cover and tape it securely to keep it from fraying. Holding the exposed core, slide the cover back towards the pin or slip knot. Then, working from the pin or slip knot towards mark X, smooth the cover from the pin to mark X until all slack is removed. Mark the core where it emerges from the cover. This is Mark 1. Now slide the cover back towards the pin, exposing the core. Measure one short section of the fid towards the pin and make two heavy marks. This is Mark 2.
from Mark II measure one FID length plus a short section of the FID. Make three heavy marks. This is Mark III. Now we're ready to insert the cover into the core from Mark II to Mark III. If you're splicing an eye with a thimble that has ears, you'll need to insert the thimble before inserting the cover into the core. Slide the core through the ears of the thimble and slide the thimble past Mark III. Put the cover into the end of the tubular fid. Tape it securely. Insert the fit at Mark II and slide it through to Mark III. Be careful not to snag any coarse strands as the fit is worked to Mark III. The core is typically loosely braided. The fit should move easily down the center of the core. Bring the fit out of Mark III. Continue to pull the cover through the core until point R emerges at Mark III. Remove the fid from the cover. The cover is now tapered by removing the strands marked earlier from Mark T to the end of the cover. Start at the end of the cover. Pull each strand completely from the braided cover. Once all the strands have been pulled from the cover, cut them off close. The result should be a gradual taper ending at the tape. Pull the cover back through the core until Mark T emerges at Mark II on the core. Insert a pin or awl through both cover and core at Mark II to keep them from moving. From Mark X on the cover, Measure approximately one-third a tubular fid length towards the pin or slip knot and make mark Z. This is the exit point for the core. The core will be inserted into the cover from mark T at the crossover point to mark Z. With the end of the core taped into the fid, the fid is now inserted into the cover as closely as possible to mark T. Work the fid from Mark T to Mark Z on the cover. When the fid reaches Mark X, be careful not to snag any of the internal core strands from Mark X to Mark Z. Alternately pull the cover and the core until the crossover point is tight and roughly the same size as the original rope diameter. Holding the crossover point securely, smooth all the slack in the cover from the crossover to mark Z. Smooth the core from the crossover to mark X. Remove all slack from the eye and make certain the crossover point remains tight. Now mark the core tail through the opening in the cover at mark X and also where it emerges at point Z.
pull the core tail out at mark Z until the mark you just made is about 6 inches from point Z and the mark made at mark X is visible. Cut the core off at mark Z. Reduce the core volume and taper by removing strands. To mark the strands for tapering, you must determine if your rope has an 8-strand core or a 12-strand core. In general, ropes under 1 and 5 8 inch in diameter have 8-strand cores, while ropes larger than 1 and 5 8 inch have 12-strand cores. In this case, the rope has an 8-strand core. We'll be marking and removing 4 consecutive strands from the end of the core. Had this been a 12-strand core, we would remove 3 consecutive strands from the core to taper. Reduce the core volume and taper by removing strands. Holding the crossover point securely, smooth the cover from the crossover to mark X. The tapered tail of the core should disappear into the cover at mark Z. While holding the crossover point, continue to smooth the eye area. Both the cover from the crossover to mark X and the core from the crossover to mark 3 to remove any slack. The entire eye should be free from slack, and the crossover point should be approximately the same diameter as the original rope. At this point, the rope should be secured to a cleat or other solid stable point just beyond the pin or slip knot tied at the beginning of the splice. We're now ready to bury the exposed core. With the rope fixed securely beyond the pin or slip knot, Alternately pull on the cover section of the eye and pull the cover slack towards the eye from the pin. This process is known as milking the cover. It is helpful to maintain some tension on the core while pulling the cover slack from the pin towards the eye. If you use tape to secure the crossover point, remove it before burying. Continue to smooth the slack in the eye from the core to mark X, pulling on the eye and milking the cover slack from the pin towards the eye. Flexing the splice area can help to loosen it up. The splice is complete when mark R meets mark X. Any cover slack in the eye can be milked from the eye towards mark X. Samson recommends that this splice be lock stitched. There is a separate instruction video on lock stitching. The splice is now complete.